You're watching NFL Daily. I am Tom Downey. It's a mailbag here on today's show. We answer all your questions live as they come in. Let's get it going. First up, Jalore, should Tyrion Davis Price play this Sunday afternoon? So that is the Niners rookie back out of LSU. Elijah Mitchell's injury means yes, he should be playing. Now, I think the Niners do a bad job of drafting backs early. Joe Williams, uh, Trey Sermon, hopefully TDP can break that trend. Jordan Mason seems to have drawn the, uh, the praise of the coaching staff. It's going to be a heavy Jeff Wilson load, I would expect. But I do think Tyrion Davis Price should be active and should get some touches in week two. RC Plane Builder, can Mariota lead the Falcons to their first victory against Tom Brady? Mm. I want to say yes. Uh, I, I, I'll start positive here. I was impressed with how the Falcons' offense as a collective fared uh, with the way they designed their schemes, with the running and Kyle Pitts and multiple tight ends and all that stuff. Like, it was a good offensive scheme. They still blew it against the Saints, who are not as good as Tampa, and Atlanta played well in that game. So it's possible, but I will say probably not for the Falcons to upset Brady with Mariota. From Jay Elam, my man, why don't the Cowboys, a $5 show, by the way, thank you, Jay, you're the best. Why don't the Cowboys get flowers for the offensive line and help whoever the quarterback will be? That's a great question. Like they, they've had all this time to look at receiver help, offensive lineup, and we're all like, hey, shouldn't that be a concern to you? I don't, people drink the Kool-Aid of, you, you know what? They'll, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. They, they will be able to find a way to have success. Noah Brown breakout. Hilco breakout. McGovern's great. You know, Steel will play well. And then it was a disaster in week one. So the answer is they don't want to. Um, would I sign Flowers, plug him into left guard? Probably. Now the issue is, is he in shape? Can he play immediately? I'm not sure, which again is it's why you don't wait until after an injury to do something. You kind of missed your boat to make the change there. From Juan Hernandez, how come in your power rankings you got the Broncos over the Raiders? I don't get it at all. Well, going into week one, I think non-Raiders fans thought Denver was better than Las Vegas. Now, Denver had a worse loss in week one, but it went AP poll style at Chat Sports, which I will link those that power rankings video for you in the comments, I promise you. But the answer was that Raiders didn't look any good, didn't look that good either. And it's week one. Plenty of stuff will change, I promise you. All right, from Eli Johnson. How many games until Jimmy G starts? Lance looked bad in week one. Did he, though? Like, I don't think there's anything from week one we can actually take away about how good anything was. That was a monsoon game. The numbers look bad, yeah, but you're not pl you're not ever going to play in that except once in a blue moon. Like, that's, that is not an eval game. That is a let's survive and see what we can do from that standpoint. So... Look, did Lance look great? No, of course not. Even Mahomes would look bad. I've seen Brady play bad in that type of weather before as well. So I'm not out on Trey Lance. I have still risked it all for him in almost all of my fantasy leagues. So how many games will Jimmy Garoppolo end up starting this year? Factor in injuries if you want. This is the pinned comment on today's show. Let me know in the comment section how many games Jimmy G starts for San Francisco. From Ryan Hood. Is the AFC South just bad and confidence in Carr bouncing back? I think Carr will bounce back. I've seen him be a top 15, top 10, whatever quarterback in the NFL. Now, he made some bad throws week one. Sometimes you have a bad game. I, I think too often we expect our quarterbacks to always be on, that they're always going to play at the season-long level, right? But sometimes you have great games. Sometimes you have good games, average games, bad games. It's a bad game for Derek Carr. Big reason why they lost. He still has Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, and Darren Waller. I think the, the Carr offense will bounce back with the Raiders. As for the AFC South, maybe. Uh, Indy had a lot of self-inflicted wounds. Tennessee did not look very good. Jags blew it again. In the AFC, that's your division that you could have a lot of chaos in because... No one has emerged yet, for me at least. From Bailey, are the Eagles the favorites to win the NFC so now that Dak is out? Absolutely, the Eagles are. Uh, they are the heavy betting favorite, chatsports.com says bet, promo code NFL Daily, compared to, you know, the Cowboys, the Giants, the Commanders. Absolutely. This, sh this should be Philly's division. If the, if the Eagles do not win the division, 
something bad happened. That means, frankly, I'm going to blame them in the end because they should win the division and keep the NFC East streak slash curse alive. Like I mentioned, today's show is made power or made possible by BetUS. It was is made powered by yeah, right. Use promo code NFL Daily and use or at chatsports.com slash bet. When you put down at least a hundred bucks, they're gonna give you an extra one twenty-five for free. That's chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code NFL Daily. Here are the odds for the first head coach fired. Mike McCarthy is your betting favorite, three to one. I think Matt Rule, though, is a good one to keep an eye out for, four and one. If in the event the Colts or Titans absolutely collapse, which I would be surprised by, that'd be a dark horse one to consider there. I think Matt, Mike or Matt are the ones to monitor there. Mike McCarthy and Matt Rule, by the way, three and one and four and one. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code NFL daily. SM, when is Robert Quinn being dealt? If the Bears keep winning, he will not be because they'll be competitive fighting for a playoff spot. If week one was a mirage or I don't know what the proper term is there, uh, you know, deception in the monsoon, whatever, and they regress, I think trade deadline is the time to monitor. Keep an eye on that. It depends on where the Bears are at with their team and their record. Junior Estrada, the Patriots signed Jarvis Landry next year when he is a free agent. Jack, you're a Patriots fan. Do you want Landry at all, or are you fine? He says, sure. He says, absolutely. You're going to keep Jacoby Myers, though, as your, as your slot? Big slot guy? You don't need that many slot receivers, I think, if you're the Patriots. I don't know, Tom. I would like, go get a real number one. Haven't had it for years. Landry's not a real number one. Now, if you don't want to keep Myers and you want a new slot, then yes. I would be aiming bigger if I were New England, whether it's a draft or free agency, for a true outside wide receiver one who's not Devontae Parker or Kendrick Bourne or Tyquan Thornton or you know, Nelson Aguilar or whatever. Evan Hinders, who would you rather have with their baggage, Antonio Brown or Josh Gordon? I'm going to go with Josh Gordon. Look, both guys, you're right, have their baggage, have their issues, etc., uh, Antonio Brown's issues are a major negative to your locker room. I think Josh Gordon's are more negatives to himself. Now, if they're out, of course, it impacts the team. But I'd rather, I think Gordon's issues are a lot less problematic for my team than Antonio Brown's are. From Tom Flores, should the Ravens trade Lamar Jackson after this year? The, the answer should be no. You, you should not want to trade away Lamar Jackson. He's so dynamic. He's a top 10 whatever quarterback. He's won an MVP. Now, if he's really hell-bent on getting the fully guaranteed deal, which I kind of think he is, and I understand it, I think you should at least consider it. I still say no, but I would at least consider it because with his running ability, it makes him so dynamic. Coming off the injury last year, especially if he gets hurt this year, maybe you don't want to go that route and fully guarantee his deal. I think their offer was more than fair. I get why Lamar wants more. You also have to protect yourself. If you don't think Lamar is going to sign an extension with you, then you should trade him long term. Now, you got to go find a new QB, and that could put you in the dreaded quarterback hell slash purgatory, but he's going to be franchise tagged this year next year. So you have two years of team control left for Lamar Jackson. You've got to figure out what your plan is. What you don't want is to Kirk Cousins slash Dak Prescott yourself because that hurt both teams because of the way they handled those deals. The longer you wait, the more expensive it is. There's a really good in-depth video there. Check out our Ravens channel for it. But it's a very good question, my friend. So what do you think will end up happening? Will What will the Ravens do with Lamar? Type T for trade, K for keep, W for let walk. If Lamar does get dealt, you know we'll break it down. We have NFL news, rumors, live shows, and so much more. If you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe right now. To Jack Bishop, a $2 super. Thank you, my friend, or $3 Australian currency. Translate it for me, someone. When is Isaiah Wynn getting dealt? If the Patriots continue to be bad, uh, probably before the trade deadline. I, I have been unimpressed by their offense. It's the Patricia show, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Maybe they'll fix, get it figured out. Who knows? I think trade deadline time to a contender in need of offensive line help when he becomes cheaper from his contract perspective. At that point, yes, keep an eye on Isaiah Wynn getting out. It's a good name there, Jack. Vince, 
What are chances the Cowboys or what are the Cowboys chances with a tank bowl or at least picking the top ten? So that's number one overall pick and top ten pick. Here's your problem. You will get Dak Prescott back. Your offense will be better when you get Gallup back, and your offensive line becomes a little bit healthier because you're down another starter on that front there. The offense will not be as bad as what it was in week one. Your quarterback will not be nearly as bad as what it was in week one. There's almost nowhere to go but up. Now, when Dak comes back, you're going to make a playoff run? I don't think so. I think you're going to be too far behind the eight ball at that point. But can you win four games or so? Last eight, last nine, maybe five in the last ten? Yeah. And that could take you out of the number one overall pick race. Because remember, your head coach, who apparently doesn't know the terminology of your offense still, is fighting for his job. He's not going to roll over and die in the middle of the year in terms of, like, trying. So I think they will end up being out early, fighting hard down the stretch, and then coming up just short and getting around a top 10 pick, but not the premium pick I know some Cowboys fans want. From It's Pyron, why does everyone want Trey Lance to fail? I think in general, there are, there are people who, and I think this is true in fandom and in media, I, Mike Martz, great example. They didn't like the player or the prospect coming out of the draft, and despite all all evidence that comes in, they refuse to move from their initial opinion. They don't want to be wrong. They would rather cheer for someone who's like, did you guys see Mike Martz's comments on Justin Fields and Trey Lance? Absolute garbage. I mean, ridiculous comments from a former NFL coach who just doesn't like those two guys, even though the Bears won that game, was like, yeah, Justin Fields is a bum. Like, what are we doing out here? So I think people didn't like Trey Lance coming out. Small school guy, you know, maybe they didn't like the Niners, whatever. They, would, they didn't like him. They want to be right more than they want to see a kid have success. I would rather see the kid have success. So it's Papyron. I think it comes down to previously held opinions and people not want to change it from that standpoint. From Donald Lawrence, will Jordan Love or Sam Darnold be traded? Probably not. Uh, Sam Darnold is hurt. He is a big co contract. Also, he's bad. Jordan Love did play well in garbage time for Green Bay but he hasn't been good in the preseason, and I don't know what the Packers' plans are. So of the two, I'd rather take Jordan Love because he's not going to destroy my salary cap for a year. I'll leave the same question to you guys. Pick one for me. JL for Jordan Love, SD for Sam Darnold. Mark Mulo, Tom, your Super Bowl predictions. Like everyone, I will take the Bills in the AFC because I am a coward at my core. In the NFC, I don't believe the Packers. I'm not there on the Rams. I guess I'll default to the Bucks, but that 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 NFC guys, that's wide open. AFC's got a bunch of good teams, you know, Bills, Chiefs, Chargers, NFC. I don't have a great feel for it right now. Uh, I guess I'll go Bucks, but I could go a lot of different directions there. You could even put teams like the Eagles, Philadelphia, Minnesota in that mix. It's a wide-open uh, NFC as far as I'm concerned. 